What is going on people of YouTube? My name has been Yo. Welcome to Game Week 26 FPL Preview. A time to look at who's going to be good for Game Week 26, which, may I remind you, is one game week away from Game Week 27, which is the first game week where teams won't be playing. That is Newcastle, Everton, Liverpool and Manchester City I am talking about, so it could be a low scoring game week for there. Maybe worth looking at only having three players from them four teams, so you've got at least a full 11 to play including one goalkeeper, that is. But limit it down. Actually, yeah, you can have four, including the goalkeeper. But without including the goalkeeper, just three outfield players, just so you can limit down you know, the amount of players you've got from them, so you don't lose out on points only if you play like nine players or something. But, welcome to Game Week 26. We'll focus on Game Week 27 when it comes. But today, three players, each position. Am I going to think they'll do well? Hopefully. Last game week, I stormed it. I'm not going to lie, I stormed it. I got, I think, two in the defence, Two in the field, uh, none up top, but I think I got maybe all three in the um, goalkeeper right. With my striker options, only six strikers in the whole of BPL scored, so there we go. But I've waffled on for too long. We're going to start off with the goalkeepers, and starting off, we've got West Ham's number one, Mr. Adrian. Now, he lost 1-0 to Southampton, who, by the way, with Fraser Forster in goal this season, have a 100% clean sheet record. Yeah, that's that's happened. And he has got good record on him, only 16 sheets, so it could be better. But his next game is against Norwich away. Now, Norwich have been diabolical. And to be honest, um, as much as I supported them before, I think they're doomed to go down, unfortunately. Um, they're sitting there. Uh, I can't look past... Oh, the current three looks pretty appetising for a going down party to me. Uh, West Brom might sneak in there. Uh, but to be honest, um, it's looking bad for them. But I think they'll get a clean sheet, West Ham. Also, a bit worth looking at um, a few attackers as well, because Norwich have been poor in the well, in everywhere, in the defence, in the midfield, in the attack. Should be a good game week for um, Adrian. Should be looking at getting a clean sheet. Moving on to the person who I mentioned earlier, Mr. Fraser Forster. Like I said, Stilkenberg, look how many games he's played this season. Look how many games he's played. That is it, game week number one. All the way to him at number 20. Missing two. That's 18 game weeks. He's got 57 points. In just five, Fraser Forster has got 36. Indeed, it is incredible. And what a game week he had against Arsenal. Putting up 12 points after his miraculous 10 saves. But he's got Swansea next. And I think that's another good chance to get a clean sheet. But you say, oh, Swansea have been, have been improving recently. But look at their last five games. You've got Watford. Stopped Watford. Got 3-0 against West Brom. Looked pretty comfortable. 1-0 away against Manchester United, who had been looking good. You got 0-0 against Arsenal, again, who had been looking good. You got 1-0 against West Ham, who again had been looking good. So I think Swansea will be no worries. Sweep them aside. Another good three points for Ronald Koeman. And I think this will be the start of something new for Southampton. And lastly, I've got a, a long-awaited return for a goalkeeper from Watford by the name of Mr. Horelio Gomez. Now... He has not been in there for quite some time. Made eight saves against Tottenham. Maybe was a bit unlucky not to get the clean sheet. But, as I said, he's had a good season up until last... Well, excluding Chelsea, they've been poor in the defence recently. Lacks, you know, the wins and the goals that they got. But they're away against Crystal Palace. They've been poor. So, I'm going to put Gomez in there because I think they've got a good chance of getting a clean sheet. Moving on to defenders. We've got a Bournemouth defender in there. He's on my team, actually. But it's by the name of Mr. Charlie Daniels now. This is for two reasons. One, he's 4.6 million. For a Bournemouth defender, I know I've slated Bournemouth defenders, but B, you look at their recent games. Nil-nil there. You've got a nil-nil there. Goal and assist and assist. He's looking pretty good. And the third reason, home against Stoke. Why is that good? Stoke have been shocking. And if he can get on the score sheet with maybe a goal or an assist, as he likes to do... And also about a clean sheet, could be a high scoring game for him. And I generally think it's possible. And he can do it. So Charlie Downs in there. Next, we've got a Chelsea defender. Um I saw the thing that happened to Zuma. I was watching the game. At first I didn't I just thought he landed awkwardly, maybe he sort of twist his ankle or something. But that looks like it was quite a horrific injury. So condolences to him. He has a knee injury. He probably won't play for a good amount of this the rest of the season. So I'm gonna say Cesar as Billy Quetta, who, just to let you know is on there, as you can see on the right-hand side of my screen, just to show you, this is what my screen has. Dave is just his nickname in the Chelsea um, thing. I'm sure everyone's heard of it. 
But he has got a good game week coming up. Home against Newcastle should be three points, should be a clean sheet, should be Chelsea, hopefully moving away from that relegation scrap. But who knows? You never know what Newcastle is going to come out. And last time I played it was 2 all. so... Like I say, who knows? And lastly, we've got another Southampton defender by the name of Mr. Jose Fonte. Now, he, a debate between him and Van Dijk, he got the better of Van Dijk in the points race last game. He got two bonus points. Van Dijk only got, you know, the clean sheet points. So, Van Dijk, um, you know, well, it will still get points, but I think Fonte, because looking at him, away against Swansea, in general, just any Southampton defender, but Fonte being my pick, captain, leader, legend. And this time, this one is not a racist. I think he's captain anyway. I hope he is. I was just remember like a muppet. Moving on to the midfield, we've got a Liverpool midfielder, and well, it's Firmino because no one else is really doing well. No news on Coutinho, but he's he's got red, so not what's happening with him. But Firmino will come in. Good game week against Norwich. Good game against Sunderland, uh, Sunderland, and two poor teams. What are you thinking, Kurt? Away against Aston Villa. That's what I'm thinking. And if he's, they're going to score, it will be through him. Cause that's the only thing, well, the only um, way they're getting chances at the moment, which is through him, because he got a goal and assist in their 2 0 win. He played a huge part in the Norwich win, scoring three of their, or taking part of three of their five goals. So he's in form, and he'll definitely be taking part in some of the goal scoring festivities if there are there. What a sentence that was. Basically, he's going to do well. <laughs> Moving on to the second player, we've got a man like Manchester United. Now, that in itself is strange. But I'm looking at it, and I'm picking out Mr. Jesse Lin. Yes, I know Jesse Lingard. But storming game against Chelsea. Surprises on take off for um, Depay, and then Depay gave away the ball for Chelsea to go up the other end and score. Oh Memphis! Oh Memphis! But Lingard, I have slated the Man United attack, but looking like they're playing better football. Screamer at the weekend. That's a three goals in the last five games for Jesse Lingard. He's looking like it could be. A bright spark in the United's dull season. He's got a game against away against Sunderland, so if they're going to score, he's got a good chance of doing so. And lastly, again, this, we've had some, usually a few surprises, but this one is a big surprise. Um, I don't think I'll be saying this at all this season. Aaron Lennon. He had a good game against Newcastle, good game against Stoke, and he had a good game against Newcastle, so they stuck with him at Stoke, and he had another good game against scoring another goal um, against Stoke. And they've got a game against West Brom, Right before the double game week, so yeah, be careful who you bring in because Firmino and Lennon are both double game weeks. As two, I believe, is no one else yet. So ignore what I've just said. But Lennon and Firmino are both double game weeks, so watch out for that. 5.6 million if he continues to play like the way he is for the rest of the season. What a signing that could be for your teams. And lastly, move on to the attackers. And Benikafobi is right back in there. And um, I saw someone in the comments... Um, if I, whether, whether I said this before or not, I don't know. But I saw someone in the comments saying, why Ben Kofobi? I don't know much about him. Three goals in his first five, only not scoring against Arsenal, which you can't really complain against, and not scoring against West Ham, which West Ham had been playing well, but the one goal didn't come through him. But he's scoring against Norwich, Sunderland and Palace. Three poor teams, you could say, I know. Um, but I feel like he's definitely going to be a 10 goal a season striker. Maybe even get 10 in this season. I wouldn't bet against it. He's got... Coming up, a home game against Stoke. And like I say, Stoke have been poor, so good chance for him to capitalise on it and get his fourth, maybe even fifth and sixth goal of the season. Moving on to another strike. Actually, you're already on him. Romelu Lukaku is coming back into there. 151 points after his nine points tally against Stoke. He's got a West Brom game coming up. And like I say, be careful because he has also got a double game week coming up, which means he misses game week 27 when the Capital One Cup final is on. He had a good game against Stoke. Finally scored another goal. West Brom coming up. Should be goals of plenty in that one for a good attacking team in Everton. And lastly, niche, niche, expensive striker is Diego Costa. Now, strange as it is, why is hold on. First of all, why is Pato red? Lack of match fitness, okay. But Costa scored a goal against Man United. He's looking good for his money at the moment. If you look at it, scored a goal against Palace. He scored two against Watford, a goal against Everton, goal against Arsenal, goal against United. He's back to the Diego Costa of last season, which was scoring goals, compared to this season, which was eating people and eating officials and generally just being an absolute... I'll tone my language down. <laughs> but a, a rather violent word was going to come out of that, and he's not a very nice person. But when he plays well, he's fantastic to watch. He's a great player. Coming up against Newcastle, 
again, should be goals aplenty. And that being said, I've gone through all the players. So, just to remind you of the 12, we've got Adrian, Fraser Forston, Jorelio Gomez between the sticks. The three defenders, Charlie Daniels, Dave Ada, a.k.a. Cesar Aspilicueta and Jose Fonte. The midfield, we've got Firmino, Lungard and Aaron Lennon. And the three strikers, Benny Kofobi, Romelu Lukaku and Diego Costa. So, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, then leave a like. Let me think in the comments down below and subscribe if you feel like I'm worthy. And I'll catch you all in the next episode. Review and preview, hopefully. Peace.